Right, from Rose Hill, our man in the ring is Ken Callender. What's the good oil, Kenny? Thanks, Kenny. Well, yeah, I tipped a couple of winners last week, but in this business, you're only as good as your next winner, not your last winner. So here we go again today. Uh, four races live as usual, and in race four, I like a horse from the south coast. Now, it's a long way to come from now at a Rose Hill, both class-wise and in distance. My tip, number four, Hadrian Starr, won at Nowra last Saturday. This is a lot tougher, but he's a class horse. Don't you worry about that. He's well up to city standard. I think he'll win. Number four, Hadrian Starr. Race five is the Tui's Hurdle. We usually leave the hurdlers to Melbourne, but we've got them up here today. I'm totally reliant on my Melbourne informants, and they tell me that number one, Monsoon Magic, can beat Kingston Town's brother, Pride of Kingston. So number one, Monsoon Magic in race five. In race six, I like number seven, Mint Machine, an ordinary horse, but he gets his chance today. It's an ordinary field. And in race seven, the bet of the day, number 10, Babs Gay. He'll be at short odds, but he'll get the cash. And that's what we want. Good luck, good punting. Back to Maxie Walker in the studio. Well, thanks, kid. Uh, a good, in great shape with a great body, Johnny Tapp. <laughs> good on you, mate. Uh, many wouldn't agree with you. Well, uh, the, the race coming up is for three-year-olds, and there's a horse here called Jacob's Creek. And he's obviously named after the good drop because he was sired by River Ruff. His last run was very good, and uh, that run has trimmed him down. I thought he had a spare tyre here last time out, Kenny. And the horse you're, you're tipping here, Ken, I believe, is uh, Hadrian Starr, whose country form has been outstanding. Yes, Johnny, he's at big odds, but, uh, well, occasionally I like a bit of value. I hope he can win Hadrian Starr. Uh, so far, he's only one down the south coast, but I saw him beaten. He ran a place in town. I saw him beaten one day at Kembla. He should have bowled in. And last Saturday, uh, they tell me that down at Nara, he absolutely streeted them. I hope he does the same today. Let's look at these prices. Number one, Vitain is at seven to one into six to one. Uh, Jacobs Creek, the hot pot, he's six to four favourite. Sure, he'll be hard to beat. 20 to one direct sale. Hadrian Starr is getting out of it, seven and a half to one. He's a bit longer even with Bookies, about 10 to one. He's got a great hope though, don't you uh, worry about that, as Joe Bialki would say. 40 to one, Mark Supreme, 40, Pleasure Hill. Solo Dios, big firmer in the ring, four to one on the tote, could even come in a fraction. Eight to one, Tony's Pearl. Uh, she looked a treat in the uh, yard before they went out. Missouri Rebel, unraced, but has showed a lot of speed in trials, is at 50 to one. Record Rancher is scratched. What Magic is at 9 to 1, in now to 8 to 1, and 100 to 1 Magic Potion. John, if you're going to tip a roughie all day, if you're going to call one uh, to come home first, I hope Hadrian stars it. Righto, Kenny, well, I'll certainly uh, give him a kick for you over the concluding stages. Big one run in Melbourne a short time ago, the Sandown Guineas, and Bart Cummings and Tommy Smith, Quinelladets. Here are the closing stages. True Label being tackled by Nosy Knight with 400 to go. Then High Waters and Tristan are looking for the way out. Uh, down the outside, Escalation running on pretty well. Ben Barra Queen is wider on the tracker. Tristan is getting a run on the inside with 200 metres to go. And it's Tristan R going after Nosy Knight. Uh, Stargazer finishing on pretty well. Uh, and High Waters is there also. Tristan has got through on the inside to hit the front. But Stargazer's the danger. Stargazer hit the front from Tristan R close to home. And Stargazer won the Sandown Giddies. Stargazer's won it from either Tristan R or Drumming for the minor placings. Close up behind... And by a strange quirk of fate, uh, both Tommy Smith and Bart Cummings are at Rose Hill. They didn't bother to make the trip to Melbourne. They watched that race with great interest on closed circuit television. Tristan R got a rails run to hit the front, but along came Stargazer. And who do you think rode Stargazer? Only the bloke that's won the Melbourne Cup and just about everything else uh, run during the Melbourne Carnival, Shane Dye. Has he got a hurricane behind him at the moment? Now, uh, direct sale is uh, out of line, and it looks as though the rider has dismounted here. Johnny Grisdale, yes, he has. Direct sale, riderless, is uh, rather reluctant to move into the gates. He's uh, proving very obstinate direct sale. Grisdale rode a winner earlier on here today. Uh, direct sale is trained at Warwick Farm by J.A. Shord. Won a race at Warwick Farm, as a matter of fact, back in April. I can't recall him playing up at the barrier that day, but he's certainly turning it on for young and old here at Rose Hill. Now he might be in. Yes, direct sale, I think, has gone up. Magic Potion stands up well in the stalls, and we just wait on Hadrian Starr to come up and complete the line, and they'll be all set and ready for a start. The line's taking good shape. Pleasure Hill. Now the young gentleman uh, starting the races at Rose Hill today is Dale Jeffs. Son of um, former Sydney Turf Club course manager Johnny Jeffs, now in Hong Kong. Starter ready. 
has the button and they're about to break and the stall's open and they're away. Mark Supreme a little bit slow to move at the start and wide out Jacobs Creek bounced out in front taken on immediately by Pleasure Hill. Missouri Rebel is showing good early pace and Vitain is prominent followed by Solo Dios. Hadrian Star trapped a bit deep early and further back What Magic. A gap then to Tony's Pearl and Mark Supreme followed by Direct Sale and last is Magic Potion. Coming through the gap onto the course proper Jacobs Creek got to the front and is steadied up to lead by three quarters to Missouri Rebel. Two lengths away, Vitain on the inside of Pleasure Hill, followed by What Magic and Hadrian Star covering ground. Then Solo Dios and Tony's Pearl, followed by Mark Supreme and Direct Sale, and last is Magic Potion. To the turn, and Jacobs Creek is the leader. In second place on the outside, Missouri Rebel. Vitain made the bend three deep. On the fence, What Magic, followed by Pleasure Hill and Hadrian Star. Jacobs Creek got away from them on straightening up. Jacobs Creek by two lengths on Vitain. What Magic is running on well, and further back then came Hadrian Star, but Jacobs Jacobs Creek has shot away. What Magic has run into second place. She's finishing on very gamely now. The, the leader's paddling, and What Magic is coming at Jacobs Creek. What Magic on the outside is coming home the better. She might be dying on a run, but she's probably still got there. Very close, very tight. What Magic or Jacobs Creek? Now, Hadrian Star probably third in front of Tony's Pearl, direct sale. Then Vitain and Magic Potion. Further back, Solo Dios, followed by Mark Supreme and Pleasure Hill and Missouri Rebel, weakened out of it to finish at the tail of the field very close again very tight what magic's run started to peter out 30 or 40 meters from home and jacobs creek raised another effort and there's nothing in it by crikey it's as close as a boarding house scrape of butter what magic on the outside ridden by craig carmody what magic is showing nine dollars forty and 260 on the tote jacobs creek is showing 270 and 160 and which one third? Was it Hadrian Star third? Ken Selection, I think he might get third. Hadrian Star was showing $2.10 the place. Now look at that freeze frame. Holy smoke. Uh, it is a, a cigarette paper job. An absolute cigarette paper. What magic and Jacobs Creek in a desperately close one. There's a carbuncle between them. Uh, with Hadrian Star in third place. Well, look at that. <laughs> to the naked eye and looking at that freeze frame, almost impossible to pick the chestnut filly has her head a fraction lower than jacobs creek and uh, usually the head that's coming down gains the pat in these photo finishes because the judge superimposes a white line across those two noses and somehow stand by 11 got it what magic 11 what magic on the outside by a breath from jacobs creek and hadrian star third 11 2 and 4 and there it is once again, the head coming down, got at the pat. What magic. Oh, close as, as they can possibly get. You've seen a ding-dong finish on Wide World of Sports. got a story about the two old favourites of the racing world, both champions, one's just sired and the other just retired. Max, you're so right. You know, thoroughbred breeders, and I know a heck of a lot of them, uh, constantly pursue the dream to breed that elusive champion. And most of them work on the old theory that you simply mate the best with the best and then you hope for the best. Now, one Sydney hobby breeder decided to try and breed himself a horse with Melbourne Cup potential, so he decided to send his broodmare to the dual Melbourne Cup winner, Rain Lover. The resultant foal arrived just recently and uh, just in the nick of time, too, because uh, it was shortly after the death of her very famous sire. No artist that ever lived could capture the beauty of a mare with her newborn at foot. The artist wouldn't be short of subjects in the Australian spring when thousands of foals of all breeds come into the world. Some of those foals carry huge price tags through sheer birthright. Others command attention through sheer sentiment. Like this little filly, born recently at the Tobermory Stud near Gulban. She's the very last foal by the dual Melbourne Cup winner, Rainlover, who died this year after 18 years at the stud. Rainlover made his last public appearance at Rose Hill 15 months ago, looking much younger than his 23 years. With Peter Cook in the saddle, the great horse paraded 
to the delight of racing fans who remembered his spectacular racetrack career. He won 17 races with 18 placings, including consecutive Melbourne Cups, the first of them in 1968 by a record-winning margin. One man completely overawed by Rain Lover's guest appearance last year was Sydney property developer and horse breeder Alan Lucas. I knew I just had to have a foal by him and I thought Manoa Valley was the perfect mare to send. Manoa Valley was one of only 11 mares served by Rain Lover in 1988. Nine conceived, two aborted mid-term and one foal died at birth. The other six foals have all arrived with Manoa Valley's filly being the last born significantly on Melbourne Cup Day. Rain Lover all over. She certainly has Rain Lover's colouring and an almost identical white head marking. To be born on Melbourne Cup Day was a bonus. I think it was a terrific coincidence. Seriously though, uh, a lot of people tell me that they, they believe it's a great home and I hope mm -hmm. they're right. More than that, I just hope she grows up very healthy, beautiful, and if she can win a few races, that'll be wonderful. All being well, this time next year, the filly will have a half-sister or brother by this aristocrat. His name, Air de France, by the great Seattle slew from the champion race mare, L.A. France, a pedigree to appease the most discerning breeder. In the meantime, the little lady has a long way to go from the foaling pastures to the green stretches of Flemington on Cup Day. Only a super optimist would say she can, but then again, she is a daughter of Rain Lover. Meanwhile, a trainer who figures prominently in Melbourne Cup history has announced his retirement. Colin Hayes told Ray Warren in Melbourne that he's decided the time has come. Yes, I have with reluctance. It's always hard to give it away. And we're having a wonderful year, but uh, I, I think that David's ready. And I, I feel that uh, while I can be around uh, to enjoy it, I'd like to see him take over the role as trainer of Lindsay Park. You've trained for some very big names in the world of racing, the, the Sheikh and, of course, Robert Sangster. Are, are they more difficult to train for, those sort of people, than, say, uh, no, the not, smaller people in racing? No, not at all. They're very understanding and they're horsemen. They love their, their racing and, uh, and Robert's a very good friend of mine and we've had lots of, uh, lots of happiness together, lots of joy. We've won some very big races for Robert and, and uh, he's, uh, he's a great sport. And Sheikh Hamdan is a, is a superb person who, uh, you know, there's some, some people might think that they've got too strong in European racing, but this isn't correct. Whatever they get out of racing, they put back. They build racetracks for the clubs and, and uh, sponsor races and veterinary hospitals, and they're great for the industry in Europe. You've talked about horses that you've trained, but what's been the greatest horse you've ever seen? I think Tullock. Tullock? Yes, yes. I, I, thought, I looked after Tullock very briefly for Tommy when he sent him to Adelaide to win his, his 100,000 pound race and uh, uh, we brought him up to £100,000 and uh, he was a, really a great horse. Yeah. Yeah. Cole, the best jockey you've seen. I mean, you've had an association with some wonderful jockeys, Michael Clark, Brent Thompson. Yes, yes, well, it goes back further than that. Ron Hutchinson, Bill Williamson rode occasionally for me, maybe because it's the age I'm at, but uh, I thought those old days, like uh, when I, Neville Sherwood was a superb rider. They say so. Yes, and I... Uh, I thought he was as good as any. Some famous old faces in uh, the footage towards the end of that story, including the late, great Ken Howard, my old boss, and it's always good to see KH uh, pop up from time to time on uh, Memorabilia Corner. OK, uh, monsoon magic in the Trans-Tasman hurdle, Ken, coming up in just a few minutes at Rose Hill, you wouldn't believe it, was sired by Rain Lover. What a coincidence. Yeah, I tell you what, there's uh, some good breeding coming out there today and also there's a Kingston Town's uh, full brother, so that's going to be interesting to see how well he goes. I, I think it's one of the, the, the great joys of life to see uh, yeah, the foals and horses just running around out in the fresh air. Um, yeah, I think it's the relationship between man and, and the animal, they are very special. Yeah, I think uh, everybody, no matter what walk of life, they're all a bit of a sucker for uh, you a young foal running around the paddock, yeah, aren't we? He yeah. looked great. Yeah. Sure gets the ticket, doesn't it? Still to come, rodeo, power boats and aerobics. Yasu uh, and Richard Muick there. Uh, done a lot of miles too, Yasu. I think another man that's done a lot of miles is Johnny Tapp at Rose Hill. About to call race five. 
Yeah, Maxie, I've got a few miles on the clock, that's for sure. You know, next Friday night at Harold Park Paceway in Sydney, one of my very favourite sporting events is to be run. It's the Coca-Cola Bottler's Miracle Mile for 1989. The best six paces at the time in Australasia, and the barrier draw is absolutely vital. Let's draw those all-important barriers now with the chairman of the New South Wales Harness Racing Club, Mr Lindsay Nickel. Thank you, John Tapp. We are now about to commence the barrier draw for the all-important Coca-Cola Bottlers 1989 Miracle Mile. I'll ask Alan Tinkler to draw the first horse. Thanks, Lindsay. The first horse out of the barrel is Tip Top Prince. Drew barrier five. The next one is Luxury Liner. Drew barrier one. The next one is Earth Station. Barrier two. Thor eight. Barrier three. Westburn Grant. Barrier four. And the last one, Jody's Babe. Jody's Babe drew the outside barrier number six. Now, that completes the barrier draw for the 1989 Miracle Mile, and we'll just repeat them. Number one, Luxury Liner. Two, Earth Station. Three, Thor 8. Four, Westburn Grant. Five, Tip Top Prince. Six, Jody's Babe. The first reserve is Koala Sunrise, and the second reserve is Butcher's Mate. Yeah, that's uh, Harold Park Paceway next Friday night, the Miracle Mile. And now at Rose Hill, an annual event here in New South Wales, the Tui's Annual Hurdle. Uh, I don't know much about hurdle races, but I've relied on my friends in Melbourne who tell me that number one monsoon magic will be hard to beat. At the moment, he's showing seven to two on the tote. Pride of Kingston is at five to two. Chapeau at 14 to one. A clear favourite, Tia Cow Lad, is two to one and two to one on the tote. Very, uh, very heavily backed in the ring. Chief Lone Smoke at 15 to one. Nine, Saxon White. 16, Look at Me. 11, Dobbin Deans. 50, Golden Sino. 50 Dame Beggar and Foreign Agent uh, is not getting a run. Pride of Kingston, incidentally, TAB number two, is a brother to the champ, Kingston Town. Uh, he hasn't got Kingston Town's ability, but he's won his last two races over jumps in Melbourne at Werribee and at Flemington. My tip, number one, Monsoon Magic. Here to call the to his uh, national hurdle, Johnny Tapp. Thanks, Kenno. And... Uh... The fifth in Melbourne, of course, was the Sandown Cup, and a bloke called Jay Cassidy, who'd win on a broom handle, uh, piloted the winner here, Sir Destin, who ran such a great race in the Melbourne Cup. Let's pick up the closing stages at Sandown. Under Lee there, homeward bound, 400 to go, and Hibbert is the leader. Ideal centre man down the outside is coming after it, and so also is Madanier. And here comes Sedestin with a great run down the outside. Ideal centre man takes the lead, but Sedestin's going to be the danger. 200 to go. Sedestin has raced up on the outside to take the lead from Ideal centre man. Go pack, and from a long way back was Alternator. But it's Sedestin drawing clear in the final stages of the Sun Smart Sandown Cup, and it wins it well, Sedestin. Sedestin by a length and a half. Ideal centre man second. Go pack third. That was John Russell's call of the 1989 Sandown Cup and a very good call. John's just out of hospital after eye surgery, as a matter of fact. And um, he certainly proved that that surgery was successful because he spotted them perfectly in the Cup in Melbourne a short time ago. Now, Monsoon Magic has moved up into line, waiting on Dobbin Deans, and they'll be all set and ready for a start. Dobbin Deans in uh, purple with gold striped sleeves, written by Michael Klingenberg, a former child actor. In fact, on stage, he once played uh, one of Fagan's boys in Oliver. So to say he's versatile is an understatement. Now, starter Lindsay Murphy is coming over to dispatch the field. 3,200 metres the journey in the Tui's Trans-Tasman hurdle. The track is cleared in front. Inside runner, Pride of Kingston, a full brother to the champion Kingston Town. The gate's open, and Saxon White is a little bit slow to move. The others all came out in a nice even line, and there's a bun rush to the first obstacle. But Tiako Ladd jumped it safely, and is a narrow leader over Pride of Kingston when they get going. Look at me pulling hard in third place, and out deep on the track is Monsoon Magic. And just behind those came Chief Lone Smoke, followed by Dame Beggar. Golden Sino next in a tightly bunched field as they come to the second obstacle. Further back Dobbin Deans and Saxon White and back at the tail Chapeau 
Over the second one they go and Tiako Ladd jumped at it confidently. Landed about three lengths in front of Pride of Kingston. Running third on the outside, Monsoon Magic. Chief Lone Smoke fourth on the fence. A length away, Look at Me, followed closely then by Dame Beggar. Three and four deep coming around the first corner. Then Golden Sino, Dobbin Deans and Saxon White and Chapo as last as they square up to the first of the treble in the home stretch. And it's Tiako Ladd over it like a bird. Tiako Ladd jumping as straight as a gun barrel. Led nicely over Pride of Kingston. Tucked away third is Chief Lone Smoke, followed by Monsoon Magic as they come to the second of the treble in the straight. By geez, a dashing hurdler, the leader, Tiako Ladd. Monsoon Magic on the outside as they approach the one near the judge, moves to second on the outside of Pride of Kingston. And then Chief Lone Smoke, who bungled it, ran out and slightly hampered. Look at me. Further back is Dame Beggar and a gap in the field then to Dobbin Deans and Golden Sino. And Chapeau lost the rider in the home straight. Uh, Chapeau's rider uh, was dislodged and Saxon White likewise. So two out of business, Chapeau and Saxon White. And now they make their way down the side of the track towards the 1,700 metres mark with a jump coming up at that point. And a clear-cut leader, Tiako Ladd. I believe he leads in most of his New Zealand races. He loves it in the vanguard. And he's over that one safely. Nicely clear of Monsoon Magic, Pride of Kingston. Now just behind those is Dobbin Deans near the fence. At the head of the others making some ground on the outside is Look at Me and a gap then to a Dame Beggar with Golden Sino, the only other one left in the race. And they're about to swing to the back and there's a jump coming up near the 1300 metre point and Tiako Ladd the leader. Pride of Kingston second, Monsoon Magic third and then Chief Lone Smoke. Further back Dobbin Deans about two lengths to look at me and a long gap to Dame Beggar and Golden Sino. They're all over that one safely and they're almost back to where they started and now Pride of Kingston has rushed up to join Tiako Ladd. They're going together as they come to the next. Over it they go together in perfect unison. Pride of Kingston just shading Tiako Ladd and Monsoon Magic is looming into third place. Two lengths away then as Look At Me and Chief Lone Smoke together. A long gap in the field to Dame Beggar followed by Dobbin Deans and Golden Sino tailed right off as they come to the one at the 700 mark. Three jumps to go in the Trans-Tasman hurdle and Kingston Town's brother, Pride of Kingston just led Tiako Ladd who out jumped him though. Tiako Ladd over it like a bird. He's dashed away from Pride of Kingston who hit that one hard. Look At Me is getting up on the fence. Monsoon magic between horses and then Chief Lone Smoke and well back as Dame Beggar followed by Dobbin Deans, but away goes Tiako Ladd. Two to go as they turn for home in the Trans-Tasman hurdle, and Tiako Ladd approaches it. He's about four in front of Look At Me, followed by Monsoon Magic. He's over it safely. Tiako Ladd, led by three lengths on Look At Me, Monsoon Magic, Chief Lone Smoke. The others are all tied. Here's the last coming up. Tiako Ladd squares up to it, measures it, over it like a bird, and lands well clear of Look At Me, followed by Monsoon Magic. The jumping's all over. Tiako Ladd, the leader, Look At Me, is coming at him on the outside side though, Tiako Ladd's weakening look at me as wearing him down with every stride, Tiako Ladd held on and lasted to win, Tiako Ladd leads most of the way to win the Trans-Tasman hurdle over, look at me, in third place Monsoon Magic and then Chief Lone Smoke Dobbin Deans, Dame Beggar and then Golden Sino, Pride of Kingston who is the only one to finish and two came to grief in the home straight the first time around, namely Saxon White and Chapeau and we'll get a check on the condition of those riders as soon as possible now, uh, Tiago Ladd, hey, first winner I've tipped all day and it's a hurdler. I wouldn't know a hurdler from a Port Jackson shark. <laughs> Number four, Tiago Ladd to pay $2.80 and $1.40. Second, number seven, look at me to pay $4.50. And third, number one, Monsoon Magic to pay $1.60. By gee, when you only call one of these annually, uh, it's a little bit unsettling. You know what? I, I find myself trying to find the jumps all the time. The ones down the back of the course are a bit hard to see. Still, we'll get used to it. And uh, a dashing exhibition by Tiako Ladd, a J-Tap selection in the Two East Trans-Tasman Hurdle, and you've seen him win on White World of Sports. TAB dividends for Sydney Race 5. It's the uh, two East Trans Tasman hurdle over 3,200 metres. The correct numbers 4, 7, and 1. Taku Lad, $2.80 and $1.40, uh, and Johnny Tapp picked uh, that particular horse. Look at me, 7 was second. Good strong finish, uh, $4.50, and Monsoon Magic. Kenny Callender's tip, number one, coming in third, $1.60. And Kenny Callender has another tip, Sydney Race 6. It's number seven, Mint Machine. In golf, New South Welshman. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
To Rose Hill now for race six, the 2KY handicap, and runners are at the barrier, about to be called up. Ken, uh, on Melbourne Cup Day, I was at Randwick, and I saw this horse, Aladdin, score very, very impressively. I've just got a gut feeling this horse has improved pretty quickly in the last month or so. Yes, John, but they put the race on for him at Randwick with a thing running out on leading eight lengths. So I'll be surprised if that happens today, unless Golden Carrioi uh, tears away. But he's the favourite uh, and entitled to be Aladdin. I've got my money on Mint Machine. I wish I had a Mint Machine. Let's look at the prices. Mighty Willem has scratched eight anybody home. Aladdin into 15 to eight, 290. 16 Stellantic, 15 Biscuit Show, 5 Gold Mace, 5 Mint Machine, go boy, 25 Inexplicable, 12 Miss Amazer, 15 Nosh, 12 Golden Carrioi, 60 Lost Gold. Here's John. Be in view in a moment, and here they come. Racing into view now, and a good tussle for the early lead with Golden Carrioi taking over from Biscuit Show. Gold Mace is tucked away, handily placed, and then Miss Amazer followed by Mint Machine. He's going very hard. Mint Machine, he's pulling double. Inexplicable is cruising up towards the lead, followed by Anybody Home, and further back Nosh, and then Lost Gull, followed by Stellandic, and last on the outside is Aladdin. They've left the 1600 mark behind them, and going to the back, Golden Carrioi just led, being pressured by Inexplicable. Two and a half to Biscuit show third, Gold Mace running fourth on the inside of Miss Amazer past the 1400 peg, a length and a half to anybody home on the inside of Mint Machine who's settling a bit better now, out three deep as Nosh as they go down the back he's pulling double, Lost Gold is third last, Aladdin second last and Stellandic is last about 12 lengths off the lead, down the back 1100 out at a very strong gallop and Golden Carrioi led but they won't let him have any peace, here comes another one, Bisca Show Bisca Show on the outside has rushed up now to worry the leader, inexplicable Inexplicable drops to third, Gold Mace fourth, getting a beautiful run, followed by Miss Amazer, and then anybody home and further back in the field as they swing around that top corner is Mint Machine, two lengths to Nosh on the outside of Lost Gold, and the last couple in the race are Aladdin on the fence, and there's one on his outside as they come down the side of the track towards the 600 mark, and that's Stellandic, Golden Carrioi led over Bisca Show, Inexplicable third, they're all under pressure, Ken Russell is about to ease around them on Gold Mace, in turn pushing Miss Amazer about five deep on the corner, further back anybody home and Aladdin is midfield as they straighten up where Golden Carrioi got away from them, he led clearly, Gold Mace has run into second place, Miss Amazer wide out with a good run, Aladdin was hampered there at the 200 mark and Gold Mace has collared Golden Carrioi with Miss Amazer coming at them, anybody home about to push through, 100 out, Gold Mace just the leader from Miss Amazer and anybody home, I think Gold Mace is going to crack it at last however, Russell at his best and Gold Mace beat Miss Amazer, anybody home third followed by Aladdin, Lost Gull, Golden Carrioi, and then Nosh, Inexplicable, Stellandic, and the last couple, the Mint Machine and Biscuit Show. Well, that horse had an absolute perfect run in that race today. It was run to order for Gold Mace, who's been very unlucky at a couple of recent starts, and he certainly deserved to break through for a win. Gold Mace, beautifully ridden by Ken Russell, to pay 650 and 220. Now, second money will go to the mayor, isn't it, Miss Amazer? Uh, number nine, Miss Amazer, second to pay three thirty, and number two, Anybody Home will be third to pay two dollars and sixty cents. And you've never seen a sweeter ride in your life than the one handed out by the Monto Marvel himself, Kenny Russell. And you've seen him in action on Wide World of Sports. And good luck to own a Warren Peg or part owner Warren Peg. Gee, that horse has been unlucky of late. Thousand meters, the correct numbers six nine and two. Gold Mace six fifty and two twenty. Miss Amazer three dollars thirty and anybody home two sixty. Kenny Callender's tip for Sydney Race Seven is number ten, Babske. Golf news and Roger Davis. <laughs> Well, this will be the last race you're going to see live on Wide World of Sports as such because the show goes into recess after today's edition, as you well know. But I'm pleased to report racing will continue right through the long, hot summer on Channel 9. You'll still see your usual four races live, and we're going to have a little bit of cricket in between races. Kenny, I know you'll join with me in wishing our customers Australia-wide a very happy, peaceful and holy Christmas with their loved ones. Down to you, Kenno. Yes, John, I echo those sentiments uh, completely. Uh, and I hope that we finish up with a winner in the last race of the day. I need it today. I've taken the easy way out. I've tipped the favourite, but not just because he's favourite. I think he'll win. I've got my cash on him, Babske. Let's look at all the prices. 
Windsor's Pal is at 9 to 1, 14 Prince Taranaga, that's good odds. Tiendi was scratched this morning, 12 Shintilla, 50 Round Opera, 40 Pleasant Flight, 9 Moral Victory, 8 Sar Special, 16 to 1 Whiskey George, evens the favoured Babske. Short odds, but I took it. 15 High.